Good morning. I'm Julie Chen. No Iraq cutback. President Bush will address the nation tomorrow to say there will be no troop cutbacks in Iraq until next summer. We'll have all the latest. I'm Hannah Storm. Planes grounded after two emergency landings. With landing gear problems, the plane's manufacturer is recommending that some of its turboprop planes be grounded. We'll have details. I'm Harry Smith. Madeline McCann mystery. Prosecutors in Portugal will now decide if criminal charges are to be filed against the parents of the missing four-year-old British girl. We'll have that story. And I'm Dave Price. Wilderness Rescue, a three-year-old Utah boy who wandered away from his family's campsite is found safe hours later. That and more early this Wednesday morning, September 12, 2007. From CBS News, this is The Early Show. Live from Fifth Avenue in New York City. Good morning and welcome to The Early Show. We're going to get the latest on President Bush and troop levels in Iraq in just a moment. Also ahead, we're going to begin our series Against Their Will. This young woman made a small mistake and she ended up paying for it over and over and over as a victim of human trafficking. This is about children being bought and sold right here in the United States. And we're going to have her dramatic story coming up in our next half hour. Meanwhile, Julie's in Los Angeles. Morning, Julie. Good morning. And coming up later in the broadcast on a much lighter note, the virtual doll world. Little girls are playing dress up on their computers these days. It's fun for them and there's nothing for their parents to clean up. But first, back to Harry in New York. All right, thanks, Julie. Let's get right to our top story then. The road ahead in Iraq. President Bush is set to announce in a televised address to the nation tomorrow night that he'll talk about troop reductions uh, in, in Iraq. And we're also going to get the, we're going to get the latest on that story right now from Chip Reed. Let's check in with him right now. Chip, good morning. Well, good morning, Harry. President true. Bush's decision to adopt the Petraeus report is not going over well here on Capitol Hill with Democrats and even some Republicans. They say it's essentially a continuation of the status quo in Iraq. After meeting with the president, Democratic Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi said the Petraeus plan would keep U.S. Right. troops in Iraq for a decade. Please, uh, it's an insult to the intelligence of the American people that that is a new direction in Iraq. The plan would withdraw 30,000 U.S. troops from Iraq by next summer, but makes no promises about bringing home the rest of U.S. forces. General Petraeus got a rough reception in the Senate, where many Democrats, so including four presidential candidates, went on the attack. This continues to be a disastrous foreign policy mistake. Even some Republicans joined the fray. Are we going to continue to invest American blood and treasure at the same rate we are doing now? For what? Petraeus, citing reams of statistics, calmly insisted the surge is working. The level of security incidents has decreased significantly since the start of the surge of offensive operations in mid-June. But war critics argued that military progress is meaningless as long as Iraqi leaders remain mired in political gridlock. We have been begging that leadership for the last four and a half years to get their act together, begging them to do it. Senators from both parties pleaded for guidance on when the bulk of the troops might come home. Americans want to see light at the end of the tunnel. But both Petraeus and U.S. Ambassador to Iraq Ryan Crocker said it's impossible to predict. In, in, in terms of concrete things like force levels, as General Petraeus said, uh, neither of us believe we can uh, see beyond next summer. Now, Senate Democrats say next week they will again take up legislation that would force the president to bring home troops more quickly. But with most Republicans continuing su to support the president, at this point, it appears the Democrats simply don't have the votes. Harry? Chip Reed on Capitol Hill. Thanks so much. Now that the hearings are over, we want to hear what Capitol Bob has to say, CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent and host of Face the Nation, Bob Schieffer. Bob, good morning. I'll tell you what, morning, it depends Harry. on what publication you pick up. Look at the front of USA Today. To Today. It says Bush to support troop pullback. Petraeus is talking in the hearings yesterday about 30,000 troops out by sometime, you know, in the next six months or so. Is that a real troop back, a pullback, or is that the number that we're going to have to leave anyway because we don't have enough troops to replenish the ones that are there in the first place? 
Well, that's what it took the Congress two days to figure out, Harry, and that is basically this. Uh, when they put in the extra 30,000 troops this year, uh, the administration never planned to leave them past April, and the reason they didn't plan to do that was simply because we do not have an American army large enough to keep the troops there beyond next April. If you were going to keep 160,000 troops there, you would have to either, number one, start up a draft, no one believes they're going to do that, or extend the tours in the combat zone from 15 months, which it is now for those soldiers, to a year and a half. And uh, General Petraeus has already said he would not endorse a plan of that size. So what really is happening, uh, General Petraeus is saying because of the success we've had, uh, we can begin to draw down the 30,000 troops we had there at the start of this year. But what he is really doing is sort of wrapping a rhetoric of success uh, around what is frankly a military a necessity. There'll still be 130,000 troops there uh, by the summer of next year. If you continue the drawdown at the same pace that he's planning for the first half of the year, at the end of the year, Harry, you'd still have 100,000 troops there, and the next president would have to decide mm. what to do with them. At the end of 2008. Some, a number of Democrats and a couple of Republicans have been talking, is there any way we can force their hand? There have been sort of some closed-door meetings over the last 24 hours or so. Is there any chance there could be any sort of bipartisan agreement to sort of try to force the president's hand on that, or is that a no, no, no starter? I think, Harry, the short answer to that is no. I think what the uh, what happened here over the last two days, General Petraeus uh, went to the Hill and he basically gave Republicans who are still with the president on this. He gave them a reason mm -hmm. uh, to stay with the president. Now they can say, yes, we too want to bring these troops out of here, but General Petraeus says it would be dangerous to go faster. I think that the president is going to be able to hold the Republican support that he has. The Democrats want to go faster, but they simply don't have the votes, in yeah. my view, uh, to get that done. In the 30 seconds or so we have left, uh, the president has invoked uh, the idea of Vietnam a couple of times in the last couple of months in speeches. As you were watching the hearings yesterday, did the notion of Vietnam occur to you at all? It did really when we talked about everybody had their own set of statistics about what is happening there. What we learned in Vietnam, Harry, is that the, the statistics were not always wrong, they were just irrelevant. When you're winning, you know you're a winning. When you have to ask or go to statistics to find out if you're winning, that probably means you're losing. I don't think we've lost in Iraq. We're hanging on. But at right. this point, we're certainly not winning. Bob Schieffer in Washington, thanks so much. Russ Mitchell is off today, so the Saturday Early Show's Maggie Rodriguez is at the news desk. Good morning, Maggie. Good morning, Harry. We begin with a warning about commercial planes that you and I may have flown in. The Canadian aircraft manufacturer Bombardier is recommending one of its popular turboprop planes used in more than 10,000 flights be grounded. CBS News correspondent Elizabeth Palmer reports. The initial alarm was raised after one of the popular commuter planes, the Dash 8 Q400 series, crashed in Denmark on Sunday and the turboprop's propeller sliced into the cabin. Incredibly, none of the passengers was hurt. I got a cut on my hand from where the propeller came, pieces of the propeller came through the window, but uh, the side of the plane, but uh, other than that, I'm fine. Then today, the plane's manufacturer, Bombardier, issued its grounding recommendation after another one crash landed in Lithuania this morning, again because the landing gear failed. Many airlines around the world, including in the U.S., Continental, Alaskan and Piedmont, either have or plan to have the 78-seater Q400 in their fleets as it's fuel efficient and extra quiet. Elizabeth Palmer, CBS News, London. In Japan, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is resigning. Abe's one-year-old government was tarnished by scandal and a rout at the polls. Abe and Japan's parliament have been deadlocked over extending Japan's mission to support U.S. operations in Afghanistan. As we've been reporting, authorities in Portugal may be a step closer to possibly filing charges against the parents of missing girl Madeleine McCann. CBS News correspondent Richard Roth has the latest for us from London. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Maggie. Well, a huge part of the investigation this morning is a paper trail from a diary kept by Madeline's mother, Kate, to the transcripts of interrogations that's moving through Portugal's legal system. 
Today, police files on the case of the missing girl said to comprise more than a thousand pages are in the office of an investigating judge in Portugal, similar to a district attorney in the American system. For Madeline's parents, Kate and Jerry McCann, who've been named as possible suspects in her disappearance, it's an opportunity for what a friend calls a moment of measured calm. Oh, that's an, an awful lot of information to go through. Um, over the last few days, we've had some um, unusual interpretations of that information and a lot of irrationalities. Portuguese officials simply say the investigation's not over and dramatic claims in the British press that strands of the missing girl's hair were found in the trunk of a car rented by the McCanns weeks after her disappearance are unconfirmed. Police do say they found traces of blood. But Portugal's national police chief claimed there's no certainty whose blood it was. And if DNA is to be the key that unlocks the case, experts say it'll still be difficult to determine how it fits. DNA especially isn't fixed to the person. It can get onto clothing, it can get onto other people, it can move around. It's a mobile piece of evidence. Blogging on a website, Jerry McCann insists he and his wife played no part in Madeline's abduction. A nightmare, he said, that just gets worse. And with still no proof whether the missing girl's dead or alive, it's a mystery that's stubbornly unsolved. Maggie? Richard Roth in London, thank you. And coming up in just a few minutes, we'll have expert analysis on this case from a former Scotland Yard detective. There's encouraging news this morning about Kevin Everett of the Buffalo Bills. He suffered what was described as a catastrophic spinal cord injury Sunday. But now, doctors say Everett has made remarkable, in fact, almost miraculous improvement. This examination, about six hours after surgery, did show voluntary movement of his legs in his ADductors, the muscles that pull his legs together, the quadriceps, and the plantar flexors, the motors that push his feet down. Now that Everett has moved his arms and legs, his doctors believe he will walk again. The FBI is investigating a possible hate crime in West Virginia. A woman says she was held captive and attacked for a week, and now her mother is speaking out. CBS News correspondent Susan McGinnis reports. She wakes up crying, and the first thing she hollers is, Mommy, you know, she want to make sure that I'm here. Carmen Williams hasn't left her daughter's side since she was admitted to the hospital last Saturday. Sheriff Eddie Hunter described how he found Megan Williams Saturday night outside a house in the small town of Big Creek. Uh, the young victim came to the door with her hands held out, say, help me. The 20-year-old woman had been physically, mentally, and sexually abused for days. No one can say exactly how long Megan had been held. Also under investigation, the possibility that she was lured to the house by someone she met online. Police have arrested 49-year-old Frankie Brewster and her son, 24-year-old Bobby Brewster, along with four other people, charging that they participated in the abuse. I've been in law enforcement for over 30 years. And this is probably the most horrendous thing that I have ever seen or ever encountered. I really just, you know, don't understand how anybody could do anyone like that. News organizations don't usually release the names of victims of sexual abuse, but in this case, Megan's mother says she wants people to know the horror that was done to her daughter. Susan McGinnis, CBS News, New York. And now a tribute at Ground Zero. Twin beams of blue light representing the Twin Towers lit up the New York skyline last night in honor of the victims of 9-11. It's time for our first check of the weather. Let's go to Dave Price. Hi, Dave. Hi, and good morning to you, Maggie. Let's see what's happening all across the country. Things are calming down significantly after some uh, tea storms rolled through Texas, but did not produce a ton of rain in those areas yesterday, anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch, pushing eastward. Now, there is some development in the western waters of the Gulf, which could light up some tea storms today right along the shoreline and into the Gulf. Uh, western Georgia didn't see a ton of rain, but you got some, and you can expect a little bit more today. And up in the Rockies, check this out. We're going to go from the 90s all the way down to the 30s by the end of the week. And in some areas, you may actually see some snow swirling around. That's right. The northeast is going to cool down and dry out with strong winds rolling on in, and the west coast looks terrific. Still high heat in places like Portland and Seattle. That's a quick look at the national map. Here's an early look at what's going on in your area.
have much more for you in a little while. Right now, back to you guys. Julie, Hannah. Thanks, Dave. Up next, more bad news for Madeline McCann's parents. We'll take a closer look at the case. And in our next half hour, we'll meet a teenager who has been through a terrible ordeal. Don't miss our special series, Against Their Will. You're watching The Early Show on CBS. What happens when the man she loves, the father she trusts, turns out to be a neighbor's worst nightmare? I murdered someone. Is this the end for Paul? Detective Nina is a tough woman. But what do these girls do that makes her stomach turn? One, two. New Law and Order, 10 o'clock tonight. Warning, what you're about to see will get you in the best shape of your life. If you're tired of starving yourself, doing hundreds of ab exercises and spending money on expensive gimmicks and still not seeing results, then get ready for a breakthrough. Introducing the Ab King Pro, designed to give you flat, sexy, rock-hard abs. Look, ordinary machines only give you a 90-degree range of motion, but the Ab King Pro's secret is in its amazing 200-degree range of motion that targets your upper, lower, middle abs and obliques. You'll firm and flatten your stomach in days, not months. Are you tired of starving yourself with shakes, pills and fat diets? Are you tired of struggling for hours in the gym? Then you need to give your abs the royal treatment. Help flatten that stomach and eliminate love handles. Imagine losing inches as you watch TV. Plus, the Ab King Pro gives you four levels of resistance. It's perfect for every fitness level and folds for easy storage under your bed. I feel great. I look down at my stomach. I don't even have a stomach anymore and I just hop out of bed look in the mirror and it's nice just to look down and not see a stomach. Using the Ab King system, I lost 105 pounds. There's not many words you can say on how happy I am about myself. I feel absolutely great. Call and the Ab King Pro can be yours on a risk-free home trial for just $19.95. That's right, you can try it in your own home for 30 days and all you pay is $19.95 delivery. We know you'll love the results of the home trial and we'll just charge the balance to your credit card at the end of the trial period. What an offer, but you must call now. Plus, pay in full by credit card and we'll also include our 10-day slim down plan and our three-minute burnt it up DVD free for ordering right now. Have the flat, sexy abs you've always wanted. Call the number on your screen now and try the Ab King Pro on our amazing in-home trial. You have nothing to lose except the kilos. The auditions are over. Now the top 20 dancers hit the big stage. 7.30 tonight. One of them will become your favourite dancer. Now the competition gets serious. Come away with me. They're going to move it and shake it like their lives depend on it. I don't know who's in danger, but I know who's safe. New dance, 7.30 tonight. Welcome back to the CBS Early Show. I'm Julie Chen. As we told you, a judge in Portugal is now looking at the evidence in the case of missing four-year-old British girl Madeline McCann. Last week, Portuguese police officially named Madeline's parents as suspects in her disappearance four months ago. Kate and Jerry McCann insist they are innocent. John O'Connor is a former Scotland Yard detective. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Julie. What do we know about the evidence that has been presented to the judge? Well, I think it's uh, what's important is the evidence that they don't have. I mean, can you imagine how preposterous it is to suggest bringing charges of murder when, first of all, you don't have a body, you don't have a cause of death, you don't have any witnesses, you don't have a confession, you don't have a murder weapon, and you don't have a motive. Now, if anybody thinks that they could bring a murder charge with all those main ingredients missing, you know, they're, in, they're not on the real land. I think all they've got is some arguable forensic evidence. And we certainly know from the criticisms that have been made about how the first crime scenes weren't properly uh, controlled, they weren't sealed, and the, uh, the lack of 
professional activity by the Portuguese investigators has really left them grasping at straws. What they have is this arguable evidence which in itself doesn't mean a, a thing. You have to have that as supportive evidence. You can't build a case on trace elements. What they're trying to do is to shoehorn the McCanns into the evidence that they have and that's not the right way to go about it. And talk to me about what this forensic arguable evidence is. Well, they allegedly have found um, traces of Madeline's DNA in the, the back of a hire car that was hired some nearly a month after her disappearance. Now, we all know that um, uh, the quality of DNA evidence really is based on the circumstances, first of all, in which it's found, and the quantity. And you've, you have the McCanns and the, their two twins who must have been covered in, uh, in Madeline's DNA. It's going to be all over the place. So to, to consider that this is vital evidence, I think, is nonsense. It's a bit like finding a fingerprint at the scene of a burglary, and then you find that the person who left the fingerprint has got legitimate access. You know, it looks bad, but uh, in itself, it doesn't mean anything. You have to have all the surrounding evidence, and that, I'm afraid, isn't there. And I think that probably indicates that the McCanns are probably innocent. And I think to what they've conducted is a, a PR campaign against the, against the McCanns, using uh, very dubious elements of the Portuguese press to leak certain parts of the evidence even before there's anybody been charged. And I just think that the whole process of the way they've gone about this, it really leaves justice second best. That is unfortunate to hear. Former Scotland Yard detective John O'Connor, thank you. Now here's Harry in New York. All right, thanks, Julie. Still to come, Shamar Moore of the hit CBS drama Criminal Minds tells us about the season's biggest mystery. Plus, we're going to talk to Tori Spelling. You remember Tori Spelling about her journey from Beverly Hills to a B&B &B and a baby. After these messages in your local news. Want the perfect roast in under 20 minutes? You ready? Look at that. So how does Jamie add double the flavour? No one does it. I think it makes it. In half the time. That is exciting. Jamie at 7.30, then at 8 o'clock. These cocky spaniels have leapt, begged and stolen their family's food long enough. I'm horrified. Can Victoria Stillwell, the super nanny of problem pooches, transform these champion food thieves? It's me or the dog following Jamie at home Friday. Warning, what you're about to see will get you in the best shape of your life. If you're tired of starving yourself, doing hundreds of ab exercises and spending money on expensive gimmicks and still not seeing results, then get ready for a breakthrough. Introducing the Ab King Pro, designed to give you flat, sexy, rock-hard abs look. Ordinary machines only give you a 90-degree range of motion, but the Ab King Pro's secret is in its amazing 200-degree range of motion that targets your upper, lower, middle abs and obliques. You'll firm and flatten your stomach in days, not months. Are you tired of starving yourself with shakes, pills and fat diets? Are you tired of struggling for hours in the gym? Then you need to give your abs the royal treatment. Help flatten that stomach and eliminate love handles. Imagine losing inches as you watch TV. Plus, the Ab King Pro gives you four levels of resistance. It's perfect for every fitness level and folds for easy storage under your bed. I feel great. I look down at my stomach. I don't even have a stomach anymore and I just hop out of bed look in the mirror and it's nice just to look down and not see a stomach. Using the Ab King system, I lost 105 pounds. There's not many words you can say on how happy I am about myself. I feel absolutely great. Call and the Ab King Pro can be yours on a risk-free home trial for just $19.95. That's right, you can try it in your own home for 30 days and all you pay is $19.95 delivery. We know you'll love the results of the home trial and we'll just charge the balance to your credit card at the end of the trial period. What an offer, but you must call now. Plus, pay in full by credit card and we'll also include our 10-day slim down plan and our three-minute burnt it up DVD free for ordering right now. Have the flat, sexy abs you've always wanted. Call the number on your screen now and try the Ab King Pro on our amazing in-home trial. You have nothing to lose except the kilos. 
watching the cheekiest movie premiere this year. Bad boy Jude Law. All the boys want to be him. All the girls want to be with him. Anybody in the mood for a little Alfie straight up? Ten's big premiere movie, Friday. It's time for the Rugby World Cup. It's time for rugby fans everywhere to go a little bit crazy. Get behind the scenes for an irreverent look at all the news and dramas of the world in Union. 10.30 Friday on 10. Good morning, I'm Susan McGinnis. There is more ahead on The Early Show and on this CBS station. First, more scam artists are targeting senior citizens and they end up wiping out their life savings and ruining lives. CBS News investigative reporter Armin Katayan reports. What about some more leads? I need some more leads. I'm looking for some specialized leads. A phone call between a telemarketing con man and the supplier of so-called leads. Information like home phone numbers, bank accounts, and credit card history craved by con artists. Why is a credit card so important? It shows that person has access to money. Sergeant Yves LeBlanc of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police is in the business of tracking down those who traffic in leads, often pulled from phony prize or sweepstakes entries used to gather the names of the gullible. As soon as they're putting their signature on that form and sending it back, they now go on a sucker list. A sucker list. A sucker list. That's what it's called. Yeah. Lists with revealing names like these. Oldies but goodies for compulsive gamblers over 55 years old. And suffering seniors, those with debilitating diseases. Pure gold in the hands of this Montreal con man who asked we call him Zach. They're guaranteed hits. So I'm looking at phone numbers. I'm looking at names. I'm looking at dates of birth. I'm looking at banks. There's 12 names on this page. How many could you close? Probably all 12. With some scam or another definitely today in cities like Montreal leads are the way in to a 40 billion dollar a year global criminal enterprise centered in Canada home to hundreds of boiler rooms preying on hundreds of thousands of seniors in the United States I was scammed with this Canadian outfit uh, pretty strong 85 year old Alonzo Fox was on dozens of sucker lists having entered phony sweepstakes for years he ended up being conned out of $40,000. I have had as many as 47 uh, requests for sweepstake entries in one day. Authorities say names found on sucker lists in busted telemarketing boiler rooms in Montreal were traced to forms sent out by Rick Panis, the owner of this printing business in Rock Hill, South Carolina. In 2005, Panis was barred from doing business in Iowa for bogus prize mailings and is currently under investigation in North Carolina for sources say his role in selling leads to con artists. When we went to Panis's business, we got this reception. Excuse me, sir, I'm looking for Rick Panis. Yeah, is I know he here? Are. Well, what outrages me the most, I guess, personally, would be the fact that they are targeting people that are susceptible. Well, there's a very convenient marketplace to get your start right here online. Postal Inspector Tim Mahoney tracks down lead suppliers in the U.S., priming the pump for boiler rooms in Canada. It's fairly obvious in a lot of cases that they know how the leads are going to be used. Do they know that their leads are going to people who are ripping off? Of course. The Americans? Yeah. No question? No question. They don't care. They get their money. That's it. So when we hear the we're just supplying the names. We don't know what happens to them. Don't believe that. Today, Alonzo Fox shreds all his junk mail. Perhaps the best defense against showing up on sucker lists like this. The lifeblood.